This is your friend, Dr. Samuel Kisiedu in Hampton, Virginia. And this is the second part of frustrations in our relationships and marriages. And I want to point out there are uh, most of them, most of them are related to communication. I have a number of points and I go to point number 10 when the one never understands you because the prejudice mindset or there are initial impressions the one has had about you or about this type of people, about women, about men, about people you live with who are not your parents. And it's not making the one understand your point of view because you're not my dad. Maybe your auntie's child, your uncle's child, or the person's a stepdad or stepmom or stepchild and all that. Because of the impression, this is not my biological father or mother. This is not my biological child. That impression is making the one not understand some things. So no matter what, there is that mindset which has to be broken through. And you have to work not only your words but your behavior. It's communicating to the person of full acceptance, okay? So we are number 11. When the one is too sarcastic and mocks you, making fun about everything. I say, he doesn't take me serious. I know a woman who was complaining about her husband, making fun of everything. When that happens, then the next problem, the next problem, so they had disagreements here and there. In the end, they divorced. So sad. So sad. You make things light, joking, making frequent, uh, foolish or stupid remarks. So you silence the person or the one doesn't want to be in your company anymore. If you have a group of people on a, on a page in, in, at a, or in the media or in a, in, in a church setting, workplace, school, committee, you see, the comments you give about what other people say and the way you correct, if it's somebody else, you will say it respectfully and nicely. But if it is me and the way you put it there and on, and on a WhatsApp page, is public. Facebook is public. You think it's only in public? Look at how you talk to me after church in the parking lot, at the meeting. Look at how you talk to me before people. But we forget that before people, it's what else is so public, like a WhatsApp page or Facebook page, hmm? or Instagram or whatever it is, where they are friends. And the printed pages is even powerful. When you write, it can be there forever. When you are dead and gone and it is saved, it's even more powerful. Be careful what you write. When things happen here and there, because we haven't confessed some of the things we do, we have done to people. Then we are rebuking witches and we are praying and we are raising prayer chains. And we are going to prayer forces, going to mountains. But there are things we do we don't think. That these things are serious things. Even on the judgment day, the Bible says you give account of every careless word you say. Hey, and you don't mind. You talk of I'm robbers and prostitutes and adulterers and fornicators and whatever it is. Words of people supposed to know God sometimes. Disciplined people, graduates, people who are elected into office on the radio, on the TV. People will respect. People we have made responsible and we are paying them, give them allowances. We expect them to, to do work. And they talk anyhow. People have gotten up. You think you 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 are the boy, they are your servants, you you they are in your chains. It's by God's grace you are the boss. Don't talk to them anyhow when you have meetings. Because without you, they can't be paid. And you know their fingers, as we say, is in your mouth. So you talk anyhow. Let us work on ourselves. And especially if you know God. Work on your temper. Work on your ego. And work on your wisdom. In a marriage, you go and take someone's daughter. And you're talking anyhow. Someone's son comes for your wife. And you're talking to this man anyhow in disrespect. How do you expect a man to be happy, to love you and cherish you? You're blowing the love, the affection away. People are stressed. Some people, there was a time we had a program 
in Ghana. <laughs> Most people around the know Governor Dumo. And this is somewhere around the year 2001, thereabout. And it was before this famous program, Ghanaians and people were all over the place called Joy Brother Affair. So they invited a lawyer and one brother and me. Actually, the brother is our own man, Uncle Ebo White. And a lawyer and me. As a pre-activity to talk on air, it was Super Morning Show, which Comrade Dumo was conducting. Who the Comrade Dumo who passed away was at BBC in UK. And we all agreed, and I was the one who even brought it up. But a lot of the problems are with the men. Because they feel they're in charge. That idea of being the boss instead of being ahead with brains to think, eyes to see, ears to hear, mouth to talk, nose to smell danger. And the woman is the neck holding the head. We don't treat her well and your neck is stiff. Hmm. The man will be walking like this. A lot of men like that. If you don't know how to be flexible and some of the women too are, mm, you're giving problem to the man. When the neck is stiff and is sick, the head can't function. So you're powerful. You don't know how to make your wife flexible and be nice and teach her and meet her emotional needs. One of the functions or responsibilities of a man, meet the emotional needs of the woman to be happy inside. It makes them function properly by your words, your attitude, your touch, your hug, your appreciation from the lips for little things as well as big things. And then we have commercial break. But just before the break, I remember this. Kromo Dumo said, okay, you see, because you are talking for the women at this moment. It doesn't mean the women are always right. <laughs> but he said, I'll take you to a pub. Some kind of a little bar. Close bar. And you will see a lot of men sitting there right now. Nice, good men. And the reason they are sitting there, they don't feel happy in their homes. The words of the women... Not that the women have taken clubs and sticks and beating the men. They are words and their temper. They are nyang 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 but man, stand on your feet with the word of God and prayer. You see? And be an example. Christ and the church. Ephesians chapter 5. Read verses 21 to 33. Ephesians 5, 21 to 33. Love can break the hardest bone. God came to love us to the point of dying naked on a cross to win us. You never stop winning your wife or your life. You see, no matter what. They want to be warned. That's how they are. Christ hasn't stopped. In Hebrews 7.25. Hebrews 7.25 has not stopped winning us through his prayers. 24 hours. Otherwise we'll be in trouble and the grace flows from God the Father. You see. To help your man to, to stand on his feet also. Apply the power of God given to Adam. For the devil's toe but not retort in Christ. And use love and gentleness, the word and prayer. Don't let 24 hours pass without the word and prayer. Communicate spirituality. And tap into the power of God who turned a sperm and egg into that human being you call my wife. And put a soul in. Let God be God. God is not only God during exams or when there's sickness or when there's disaster or when there's witchcraft activity or whatever it is, then God is God. But when it comes to character change, which involves you, you don't want to step in your Jordan. Moses' rod is gone. That's why he said in Joshua 1 verse 1, Moses, my servant, is gone. Step into the Jordan and stop waiting for a rod to stretch it like you did at the Red Sea. And when you get to Jericho, go around. So ask God what to do. That is what we haven't done. That's why you're fighting and frustrated. Okay? Frustrated. So number 11 was being a sarcastic person mocking Number 12, deceptive person lying habitually, never telling the truth, telling half-truth, twisting, diluting information. 
I'm trying, like, what, what am I doing? I'm talking about communication being a major source of problems in relationships and marriage. And I'm just giving examples. This is the part two. And I'm number 12. So get the first part. Okay? Deceptive. Never telling the truth. And that is a frustration. Or half truth. Or you twist and dilute. Because you're not doing something right. You see? You're not doing something right. Okay? Sin, I have what I call hindrances to the communication. My first one is sin. What did Adam and Eve do? As soon as they sinned, they went to hide. You see? And when God was asking, what's happening, the woman you gave me? Sin is the number one hindrance to hiding and not wanting to communicate. Always hiding. Always hiding himself or hiding things. Hiding his phone calls. Hiding text messages. Hiding everything. Not wanting to know when I'm coming or when I'm not coming. You see, there's a man who travels, suspects the wife. The wife hasn't done anything as such. But uh, she's attractive and people get interested in her here and there. And there's a particular man who is also married, got interested in the man. Sorry, in the, in the lady. And this man is here and there suspecting the woman. So when he travels, he doesn't want you to know when he's coming. So he comes suddenly to spy on her just in case there's a man there, whatever it is. What is this? You see, that is not how to do it. Focus on establishing a strong bond with your wife or your husband. If you think another lady is stealing him, and that bond of patience and love and understanding and the power of God will come through that. That's what God uses. Plus your prayers and your affection becomes a shield, a wall against intruders. Instead of checking phone all the time and worrying and trying to see, did he come alone or somebody dropped him or her? Is anybody else talking in the background in the office? You are just being tormented by your own lack of diligence with proper principles for success. Don't frustrate yourself for nothing. Leave your man or woman in the hands of God. But do what is right in accordance with God the Almighty who gave that man to you or the woman to you. God knows how to take care of his own. How to take care. Number 13, pretense. 13, pretense. Pretending you didn't hear or didn't understand what I was saying. You heard me. Oh, were you talking to me? Liar. Pretending he didn't understand. Oh, I didn't get it that way. You got it. You knew we had to pay that bill. You knew I was asked you to, to buy. But when close from work, you don't have to go through traffic because that time is around 5 p.m. and there's traffic. So what you need to buy, you have to go through traffic. And because you don't want to do it, you want to give me the money and find an excuse for me to get up tomorrow and go with the child to go and buy. The reason you didn't buy it is because you didn't want to take the trouble to go through traffic. It was after five when it closed. That is why you are lying. Oh, I didn't understand I was supposed to. I thought you were telling me uh, we need to get a new, uh, uh, a new this thing, uh, something for the bathroom. And we need to get some, this, uh, uh, that kind of bread. So it's sometimes you go and buy the cheap one by the roadside. Yes, people are selling by the roadside. Because you don't want to drive there. You see? Or that kind of meal you didn't want to prepare. Oh, this was there. If you don't eat it, it will get spoiled. We know that. But the reason you didn't do it, you were lazy to go all the way to that store and go and buy this and come and start cooking before I arrive. I will do a lot of these things. My mom is coming. My sister is coming. We have discussed this. And you know I said, no, okay, so I'm going to travel. But you pretend, oh, I forgot it. Oh, did you mean, oh, so soon? Oh, I thought in, oh, you are making the arrangement in August, you'll be very sure. I told you I'm traveling in August. Pretender, stop pretending. Sometimes you, you behave as if I, was, I wasn't even talking to you. You are the one I was talking to. I thought you were talking to my, <laughs> the boy, to Joe. It was you after church, you are the one I was talking to. You see? You have to stop pretending. Communication is the problem. Communicate truth and communicate well too. If you have something important, take your time, make eye contact and talk to me about it. Number 14, always talking at each other. 
instead of to each other. Lack of sensitivity. You talk as if you are talking to the world. You are talking to a human being, the mind and heart of a soul for whom Jesus died. And some of these guys, they talk to the girls in the house after going, oh, I love you, I'm going to die. Some even cry. Then they take their phone and break the relationship. You have no idea what standing against you you haven't confessed. Women are not like men. And the guys go around proposing and doing this. Sometimes he knows he's not going to marry the girl. And he's communicating the wrong thing to the girl. Then finally, the girl rather becomes the problem. Oh, you are thinking wrongly. I didn't mean that. Why didn't you correct it? Because you are benefiting from her food, her cooking, her money, her credit card, her car, anything. You're just using her like on campus. So the guys will study. And then when they're tired, then they go to the women's hall to go and sit there, chatting and wasting another girl's time. When it comes, she will entertain you. Then you live at a time when you'll be sleepy. You just use her to entertain yourself and go back to study. That's not good. That's not good. Some of the men become very nice when they want to make love or they want to use your money or use you to do something. Then suddenly they are nice. Or when there's a funeral or some function, so that you contribute your money. They use you as a show. This is my wife and this is this. But when it's me and you alone solving, uh, ba balancing the budget, paying bills, the children's homework, hugging them, loving them, playing with them. You see, bathing or bathing times, dressing, going to buy this, shopping, cleaning after eating, cleaning in the home, bathroom, bedroom, making the bed. That one is a different attitude. Then, then in church, they all dress and this is my wife. A pastor's wife, a overseer's wife, apostle's wife, this is his wife, the counselor's wife, the elder's wife, the deacon's wife. That CEO's wife. He's the CEO of this. He's, he's this, the principal secretary of this. He's the member of parliament for this. He's the congressman for this area. And congress this thing for this area. That is the wife. Then, then we come home. After using me for a show, some of the women do, do it too. Using the husband, he's my husband, he's defining themselves in the man. Then they come and talk to the man anyhow. And use even sex to punish them. To discipline them. And anything. We see. And they'll make sure uh, the home is neat and people are well fed. You see, when they get money, it's worse. His house helps and parents and people who are there cooking and doing things. If it's in the church, church people. And she's running around, tongue speaking, double chasing woman. Who doesn't know what's happening in her kitchen? You see? Supervise. Communicate diligence. It is what you have communicated to your husband or wife. It's creating the problems. Because you are not diligent with home organization. Or diligent with respecting me and loving me as the woman who sacrifices. You are never appreciative of anything I do. All you do is always correcting me, correcting me, correcting me. Whatever the good thing, when will you open your mouth? You want to address and we are going out for you to say it's nice. Perfume smells good. When will you ever see me coming out of the bathroom? Four years, five years, five, and make comments. For five years, making comments. When will you ever make love and say something appreciative? When will you eat and say something nice in front of the children? Not just nice things in a pulpit, on radio, and on TV, and in counseling, and in books, and on platforms. But when you are with your wife and your children, when will you appreciate them for them to be encouraged? When? When? You have only one life. It will soon be over. Don't be talking at each other. No matter what is wrong, let's talk to each other. Communication problem. Number 15, silent treatment. Usually when you are nursing hurts and offenses, resentment, anger from other sources, sometimes you are even angry somewhere, you bring it all out on us in the house, you will let us know what is going on. Okay? Sometimes you have, you have sinned, you have done something wrong, or you are devising evil. So you are quietly planning evil. Planning to do something wrong. Planning a separation, a divorce, this or that, how to deny, how to lie about the money. How to find a way of bringing your nephew to the house. I know it's a problem, so you are devising what lie to tell. 
you see, how to avoid appeasing the person, make pacifying the person, or whatever it is. Some have acquired nature as a temperament, but break through. Otherwise, we can't enjoy a relationship. Or very melancholic, sensitive, and ponder about things, you know, perfectionist, phlegmatic, so slow, and come to conclusions. Know whom you are with in the relationship. And don't force the one to be what the one is not. But it's is the spirit control temperament that will take over. Number 16. Unduly noisy and hilarious. Extremely sanguine. Habitual talkative. Very loud. So because of that, it's a source of a lot of your disagreement. Communication. Help him or her to work on himself or herself. Scripture. The word of God is always able to break a lot of things. And then talking nicely for it to go into the one's heart. Lying in bed, look into each other's face, find an opportunity, go on some vacation, go and spend some weekend. It's all those of children and things. Let someone babysit for you. Go Saturday morning, come in the evening. Maybe go spend Friday night and Saturday and come. It's necessary at least once a year or twice a year alone. And have a wonderful time together. Please do. And talk about issues. Not going to argue. Take one at a time. And come to an agreement. One, two, three, four, five. To do practically. If it's your wife or husband is not getting involved in your ministry the way the one has to. Finances are not well in place. And other things. So if on duly knows to work on it. Uh, almost done. Number 17, dominating and controlling and silencing the one or insults and threats. You see, sometimes saying, shut up, I'll divorce you. I'll divorce you. I'll kick you out of the house. When do you come and I'm gone? Stop that. You see, forcing the one to be, to be saying and agreeing with you all the time. Dominating, controlling, threats. It's all communication problem. You see, with the root of selfishness. Number nine, number 18. Actually, number 17 is dominating and controlling with insults and, and, and everything. And 17 is, uh, 17 is dominating, controlling, sorry. And, and the 18 is when you actually intentionally decide to be yelling at me. Something you are dominating. So it comes out as threats and all the rest of them and the shut-ups and things. But number 18, where the one is actually yelling all the time. Can't say anything soft. Yelling loudly. But there's a lady who came with her husband before and when I was talking to her, I said, Hey, you won't listen. So when I yell angrily, that is when he hears me. What is this? And they are supposed to be Christian friends. Work on yourself. See, let the word of God break these. Pray. Be humble under the mighty hand of God. And take a decision to stop the yelling. It's arrogance. Number 19. Habitually walking away. When we are talking. You know, some have that habit. As soon as you start anything and they begin to see. They have to repent of something. You're not agreeing with them about something, they start walking away. They never stand there or sit there. They will try and find something to do, like, oh, I have to do this. They have to, it's the enemy, self and the devil. They walk away. That walking away, you have to stop. It doesn't glorify God. That video, if, if you don't do anything about it, and you die and go, and it is shown, God asks you, get answers for him. What is that? You think marriage, relationships, and things like that are cheap. You see, there are good things there. Praise them. One way of having people to change, praise good things they do. And then you can talk about the negatives. Why, why you don't? And the person doesn't feel there's any good, good thing in my life. You are not appreciating simple things. Even if you made the kitchen clean or wash the car nicely, your husband smells good, the shoe is nice, open your mouth, madam, and say something. Open your mouth, my brother, and say something. But you don't. So what happens is that when a one doesn't feel appreciated, 
It's all negative, negatives. The one is fed up. What, the, walking away means I'm fed up. The Bible says, walk away from the presence of a fool. <laughs> so it's a main scripture, actually. <laughs> because you don't hear anything good. You've made the one feel that all I am in your life is trash. So he walks away and she walks away. Work on that. Say nice things. So she says, oh, you want things to be better, that's why you're saying this. It's not because you are beating me down all the time as trash in the relationship, in the courtship of marriage. Okay? Don't just simply disengage from me. I'm talking to you, and as soon as there are certain things, when I mention them, I can see from your face and your attitude, you have disengaged. You have put a wall there. You have closed the door. Don't just disengage. But intentionally doing something. Can you believe there's a woman who is so angry with her husband, no divorce, no separation, but so frustrated? Sometimes when a man is making love, can you imagine the woman will be on the phone doing text messages, whatever it is, and her husband can't stop her? Can you imagine how far we can go? That's a huge sign of resentment, anger, intolerance, disappointment, plus Ignorance. Number 20. Not taking time to tolerate my weakness or my communication efforts. Okay? And a, a expectation of responses that I have. No tolerance. Chronic impatience. Chronic impatience. Communication problem. You are not always patient with each other. Decide to work on yourself. See some good things there. Let God work on your heart through his word and prayer. Decide to be humble. Number 21, chronic anger. Angry at anything that moves across. Even when a mouse is moving across, there is me. You don't clean well and then there's a mouse. When was the last time you have been cleaning in a house? You see? Anything that happens. Blaming me for everything. The woman usually says, oh no, I don't want to make love. Oh, oh, whatever it is. And then you, you, you are so tired. Or you, your age soldiers are taking away your gun, you can't fire. And you go to hospital and go and buy, get Viagra or whatever it is. Then she can't do it. Hey, it's your fault. The way you behave when I started. Oh, I was blaming. What about you? You are so tired, you can't do it properly. That is actually the problem. You see? Other times when I said, oh, I'm sleepy and things. You did it nicely because you had energy. Blaming me for everything. Okay? You don't care about where I get money from, what I do with this, and then you're complaining about food and about that and about this. You see? Like some do, in the, they will just bring some amount, oh, this is what I have for this month. Doesn't care about anything else. Have a budget. And he sees a serious person supposed to be in church, won't care for the children's need. When he sees the woman working, doing some business, and working at the bank, is a nurse, is a medical officer, is a lawyer, Transport owner, she's doing this, whatever it is. Then she's taking advantage and having excuses. And they won't let you know how much they earn. They won't communicate it. Chronic patience. Chronic anger. Number 22. Prejudice. Interpreting everything based upon the impression you have about my tribe, my race. Judging my educational standards, social position, my achievements in my mind. That is the impression I have. You have not communicated love to me. And we have problems. You see? So the prejudice, you don't communicate properly. And that's what's given us a problem because you're communicating according to the prejudice you have about me affects all your words and your actions. And the last one, constant disrespect. Prevalent always. Constant disrespect. By your words, your deeds, and your attitude. Inform communication is information sharing, listening, and other forms of sharing that go with love, right questions, right responses, expression of thoughts and opinions, giving impressions, emphasizing points with attitude, your body language, varieties of sounds you make, building trust in the relationship. It's what communication is all about. All our problems around this. You see? The life, the blood, the truth for trust is the currency that enriches. And men are leaders in communication. Because Adam was there with God. And the head has the mouth. Before Eve came. 
And God left the woman with the man in the garden. Didn't stand there five minutes trying to give instructions. Expecting the man, I've spent enough time with you to teach this woman. I said, a man must spend time planning and organizing himself and spending time with God to get a good Eve. And share teachings, your heart, your mind. Let me know who you are, not just tell me titles and other things. You fall in love with the personality, but you look with the character. Don't give me titles of who you are and what appointments and things for the church or the nation or places or CEO and all that. What is in you which has made you a CEO, an apostle, an ambassador, congressman, okay, member of parliament, minister of state, bishop, apostle, elder, deacon, ministry leader, establish a big business in town, wonderful lawyer, wonderful doctor, wonderful transport owner, wonderful media person, one who wrote these books, the one who got the awards. awards. I'm not marrying any of these. I'm marrying you. What is inside you in the bedroom? You think I'm sitting here with four master's degrees and a PhD and certificates? My wife is not marrying them. He's marrying me. As a matter of fact, she peeped <laughs> a few minutes ago as a sign to let me know food is ready. And thank God I've also finished. So go to have lunch. Go to have lunch. Communication. I didn't even tend to look. I don't see me looking somewhere. But I've got a sign. Because we are used to each other and informed her what I was doing. So she knows I'm doing this recording. And I said after 30 minutes, it's a little exceeded that. So she was checking. And she's waiting for me. We're going to happily have a meal together. And we always read scripture and pray. That's not devotion. We have been doing that for years. Put things together. Because the tools and the gadgets are there. You are not using them. Self, speech lessons, ego, and lack of wisdom to take the things and put them together. God has given them to you. But God bless you to have the best relationships with people if you're not married. Prepare yourself for what's ahead. You can't control the storms of life. You can always make your boat strong with prayer and the word and obedience and wise preparation and humility to get more grace. So you can enjoy your marriage to even in courtship. Don't just me, me, me. Learn to make it us as we. When there's a conflict, don't just say, I told you and you do, do, do and I and you. We, us. We can do this for us this. Okay? Lord, thank you for all this. Help us to solve our communication problems and enjoy our marriages, relationships, courtships, family life, Relationship with colleagues, whether they're in school, on the job, and everywhere. In Jesus' name, amen. Call me in the United States on 1-917-741-0643. Or email me k-i-s-s-e-a-d-o-o -S -S -E at msn.com. There's a website, www.fruitfulministriesint.com. The ministry is R-I-E-S. Our ministry is Fruitful Ministries International Incorporated, Evangelistic and Teaching Christian Ministries. We work with churches, ministers, and groups and communities to enrich, strengthen, encourage, guide, typical family life, the leadership and prayer, evangelism, biblical teaching. Okay? www.fruitfulministries.int dot com ministry is R I E S. I have a broadcast on Joy 99.7 FM in Accra every Saturday morning 5.30 a.m. to 6 a.m. You can get it anywhere in the world. Put myjoyonline.com Go to live radio. Hope for your family. My Reverend Dr. Samuel Kisidu. I'm speaking now in Virginia. In Ghana called 020 Eight one two six five three three. The Ghana code is two three three. So two three three two zero eight one two six five three three. Kumasi zero two seven five three five three eight zero two in the center of the country. Okay. Get my books from Challenge Bookstore or from Baptist Bookstore if you're in Ghana, Kumasi, 
at the Macomb Opposite Anglican High School, or Gabriel Baptist Bookstore in Chroma Circle, but challenge bookstores, or call these numbers. If you are asked that, call me on 1-917-741-0643. I can send you some of the books. There are a couple of them. Okay? May the Lord bless you and strengthen you. We have people who can counsel you in various parts of the world and wherever you are in Ghana and places. You just call us. We'll put you in touch with somebody. Okay? If you want programs, let us know. May we stop being frustrated in our homes because we are not communicating effectively. Go to Amazon.com. You can download using my name, K-I-S-S-E-A-D-O-O. -S -S -E Dr. Samuel Kesidu, that download some Kindle versions of some of the books. I have three Facebook walls, first Facebook accounts. If you read what I post on the walls, there is Dr. Samuel Kesidu, then Dr. Samuel V initial in the middle Kesidu. If any of them is full, you go to the third one, which is Reverend Dr. Kesidu. Okay. In fact, the Dr. Samuel V initial in the middle is a community page, so you just like it. God bless you.